Okay, guys, so this week we are going to start talking about um, our cell unit, and we're going to start with um, some special cells that are called protists. And what we need to know about protists is that protists are their own special kingdom of animals. They do not fit into the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom or the fungus kingdom. They're their own special kingdom. Next, you guys are going to learn about bacteria and archaea, and they don't fit in with those either. They are their own special kingdom. So when we talk about protists, they're not plants, they're not animals, they're not fungus. They're their own special kind of animal. Okay, so we're going to start talking about protists. This is Objective 32. I can describe protists. Protists, again, are a kingdom of living organisms that cannot be classified as animals, plants, or fungus. They're eukaryotic, and this is going to be a word that we talk about a lot. Eukaryotic means that they contain a nucleus, okay? They can be unicellular, meaning they're made of one cell, or multicellular, meaning that they're made of many cells. And protists are kind of having an identity crisis. They can't decide what they want to be, so some of them are like plants. They contain chloroplasts, and they can make their own food just like plants can. Some of them are animal-like meaning that they hunt or gather food, just like you or I. And some of them are fungus-like, meaning that they, like, they decompose things. Okay, All protists, though, live in wet or moist environments. All of them. All protists live in wet or moist environments. And um, we're actually going to be doing this in class. We're going to look at a drop of pond water under a microscope, and we're going to see all these little creatures swimming around. Those are protists. Okay, Let's move on and go more in depth. We're going to start with plant-like protists. That's objective 33. I can describe plant-like protists. Plant-like protists contain chloroplasts. Remember your regular plants that are green. That's that green pigment in there, and it helps with photosynthesis, helps them to make their own food. So since they can make their own food, plant-like protists are autotrophs. Okay? The word, that root word, auto, right there, you will get that in language arts if you haven't had it already. Auto means self, so an autotroph makes the food for themselves. They can make their own food, okay? Examples of plant-like protists are algae. Yes, algae, you guys know what algae is. You have seen it before. It's that green, slimy stuff that sometimes is in swimming pools or in lakes, or you might just find it um, any in a moist environment, because remember, all protists live in wet or moist environments, Okay, so algae is a eukaryotic plant-like protist that can be unicellular or multicellular. They contain chlorophyll, okay, they can make their own food, and they provide over half of the world's oxygen supply. They are the base of the food chain. So the green algae is the stuff you're most familiar with, but also red and brown algae, you know what that is too, because that is seaweed, guys. So if you have ever seen seaweed, um, wash up on the beach, that is a type of protist. It's either red or brown algae, and that is a plant-like protist, okay? The other type um, that you probably use every day and don't even know about are called diatoms. Again, they're a unicellular group of algae that, com that come in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors. You can see them down here, and they're really pretty. Um, they're very tiny. They're microscopic. Remember, they're unicellular, meaning they're only one cell. Um, but they're special because they contain silica, silica in their cell walls, and we actually use diatoms in our toothpaste. I'm just going to write tooth on here. No, I'll write toothpaste. It's not very neat, but there it is. Okay, so we find diatoms in our toothpaste. That is the gritty stuff that's in our toothpaste that helps to get all that gingivitis and nasty stuff off our teeth. Okay, so protists are all around us and we use them for many different things. Moving on, we're going to talk about animal-like protists. Animal-like protists, are um, another name for them is protozoan. That word protozoan means little animal. That's down here. It means little animal. Um, so we call all animal-like protists protozoans. They're, it's just another name for them, okay, the whole group of them. Animal-like protists are heterotrophs, just like you and I. We cannot make our own food. They either have to hunt or gather it. They digest their food in their vacuoles. We digest our food in our stomachs, um, but they don't have a stomach because most of because the, they are single-celled. Okay, all animal-like protists are uni. 
going to run out of room. Cellular. And I don't know what just happened to my stuff. But anyway, um, animal-like protists are heterotrophs, and they are all unicellular. They are one cell, all of them. Okay? They digest their food in their vacuoles, and they're grouped according to how they move. So we're going to go into each individual part of how different animal-like protists move. The first one, um, the first way they move um, are by pseudopods. Here's that word right here that I just said, pseudopods, which are fake feet. This is an amoeba, all these different pictures. This is an amoeba, this is an amoeba, and this little, um, this is an amoeba too. And so what an amoeba is, amoeba is a unicellular, again, single cell, life form characterized by irregular shape and moves using pseudopods. So a pseudopod is a false foot. And so what happens is um, the amoeba is going to stretch out this um, area and through cytoplasmic streaming, which I will show you in a second. My GIF isn't working right now because I'm in drawing mode, but once I get out, I'll show you this there's a little animation right here that I'll show you. Anyway, the amoeba is going to push, make a false foot, and through cytoplasmic streaming, it's going to bring the rest of its body with us. It eats by um, something called phagocytosis. There's that word right there. And what it does is it's going to create these false feet around this piece of food, and then eventually it's going to close in, and the um, amoeba will create a vacuole around that little piece of food and then digest it. So I'm going to get out of drawing mode so that you can watch the animation over here. Please look over here because I'm going to talk about it as you're watching it. Okay, you can see what's happening right now. This amoeba has ingested two paramecium, um, and it has formed around. You can see those two paramecium. They're starting to they start to freak out because the little enzymes inside the amoeba starts to digest them. So they're completely enclosed, and now they're like, oh my gosh, I can't get out. So it just keeps playing over and over again. But you can see the cytoplasm moving inside that cytoplasmic streaming. Pretty neat. All right, let's move on to the next type. These are flagellates. Um, flagellates move by a tail-like structure called a flagella, which is attached to the outer membrane. These are flagella right here. Okay, they are long whip-like, and we're going to talk about something else called cilia that are shorter hairs. Flagella are long, and the um, flagellates move their long whip-like tail, kind of like a fish uses its tail to swim. It's going to whip it back and forth in order to um, move by locomotion through the water. Okay, um, flagellates are generally the smallest type of protozoa. Again, they have one or several long whip-like projections, and they move their flagella to move. The last type are called ciliates, and ciliates move by tiny hair-like structures used for locomotion. Before I start writing, I want you guys to look at the, um, the little video down at the bottom. Um, once I start writing, it's going to stop moving, but look at all that stuff. The big thing in the middle is called a paramecium, and it is moving its little cilia um, all together all at the same time, and you can see that it's creating... You can see all the little things that are being swept away because those tiny hairs are moving. Okay, so once I go into drying mode, that's going to stop moving, but I just wanted you to see that. Okay, so what's happening is all of these things are, they're getting swept because all these little cilia on this paramecium right here are beating really rapidly. So if you look in this um, diagram right here, you see all those teeny tiny little hairs, and they all move together all at the same time so that the paramecium can propel itself through the water. They're found in every aquatic habitat. Um, they're covered with those cilia, and they are also heterotrophs. Again, it's a type of animal-like protist, and they move by cilia. Okay? We're going to get into fungus-like protists. That's our last type of protist. Um, again, fungus-like protists are also heterotrophs. Another name for them are decomposers just like regular fungus, the fungus, um, the kingdom of fungi, like mushrooms and stuff, they're all decomposers. So fungus-like protists are also decomposers. Some of them, many of them have flagella, and they can move at some point in their lives. And this is um, a water mold and slime mold, downy mold, and then this is an example of sporozoa. Um, sporozoa is the way that this um, particular protist reproduces because it releases spores. 
Um, and you guys um, probably are familiar with spores, ferns reproduced by spores. And a lot of times if you're in the woods or sometimes you find them in your yards, you find these little like puff balls and they kind of look like this. And if you squeeze it or you step on it, all this smoky stuff comes out. Those are all spores. Um, so this type of protist reproduces by something similar to that, okay, by spores. And then here we are. This is just um, a map that is showing you um, all the different types of protists. We have animal-like, plant-like, fungus-like. Okay, your animal-like are heterotrophs. Another name for them is protozoans. And then we have three different types. We have the mebae, which move by pseudopods, flagellates that move by flagella, and ciliates, which move by cilia. We have our plant-like protists. Another name for them is algae, and they are autotrophs, meaning they make their own food. They contain chlorophyll, and we have red, green, and brown types of algae. And then fungus-like um, protists, another name for them are decomposers. Again, they're heterotrophs. They cannot make their own food. Um, they move by flagella and reproduce by spores, some of them. And then our types are water, downy, and slime molds. Objective 36, I can describe special protists. So we have some special protists that don't fit in um, with the normal. Um, this is one. This is called a euglena. It is both plant-like and animal-like. And I want you to look at the, um, the little illustration down at the bottom. Um, you can see the little, it has a flagella. If you can see that little black line um, whipping around, that's how they move. They have a flagella. And before I get into drawing mode, I just want you to take a look at that real quick. So each one of these guys has a flagella there. It would be there. They are the opposite end of where their eye spot is. And it's hard to see because they just have one. Um, but anyway, they are plant-like and animal-like. So you can see that they're green. And they're green because they contain chloroplasts. So they can make their own food. But also when there's not sunlight available for them to undergo photosynthesis, they can also um, ingest food from their surrounding water. And the other cool thing about a euglena is you can see this red eye spot. They all have it, and it is used to detect light. The other type of protist is called a volvox. Um, it's, these are really kind of hard to understand, but what it is, they are single-celled. It's a plant-like um, protist. They are a type of green algae. And they are unicellular, but they live in a colony. So you can see in the little illustration down at the bottom, the little thing that's moving around and around and around, that's a volvox. The thing next to it is a daphnia, which is also a water flea. Um, we're going to ignore that. I just put this on here because of the volvox moving around, and I want to show you how it moved through the water. I'm going to put it in drying mode. Um, so what happens is each of these little... Um, volvox green algae cells. This is an individual cell. Each one has two flagella. And what they do is they connect with each other and they live together in a colony. And you saw how they moved down here. And they form a hollow ball all the way around. There's lots of them. Each of them have two flagella. And inside you can see these um, smaller balls inside. Those are daughter colonies. So inside of these are these daughter colonies. And once, this, um, once the daughter colonies get big enough, these will break open and they'll come out and they'll be their own colony. So again, volvox are unicellular type of green algae that forms spherical colonies of up to 50,000 cells and live in a variety of freshwater habitats, okay? They form a hollow ball colony. They are not multicellular. They are unicellular. They just live together. They also have an eye spot. It's um, white. You can kind of see it on this one. Um, and that is used to detect light as well. Okay? Again, they're unicellular, unicellular. Okay? Moving on. Um, organelles. So we're going to talk about the different parts of these. Okay? We're going to be talking about um, mostly animal-like. So we're going to talk about the different structures that are found. Um, this is an amoeba. Um, again, the foot-like projections, these are called pseudopods. Um, we have these really cool things, contractile vacuoles, and usually they look like this. 
and you'll see it in another picture in just a second. Um, what a contractile vacuole is, it's not a storage area because our um, protists live in wet and moist environments, they always get a lot of water, extra water, and they need to another way to get rid of water. So they use their contractile vacuole to, re to um, eliminate extra water from the cells. And then this is the nucleus. That is where the DNA is stored. Um, it is the brain of the cell, and um, it's usually in the center. And then we have food vacuoles. Remember I told you that animal-like protists um, have to hunt or gather their food, and so they create those food vacuoles um, around food that they have engulfed. Remember I told you that um, an amoeba makes these little pseudopods, and if this is a, um, a piece of food, it's going to come around and close in, and then it will create a food vacuole around that piece of food. Okay, so that's an amoeba. Next, we have a paramecium. Okay, remember paramecium moved by cilia. So here, all those little hairs are cilia. And um, this, we are not going to call it a gullet. We're going to call it an oral groove. Okay. Um, this is the cell mouth down at the bottom, and you can see where the food is coming in. Guess what's forming around that food? The food vacuoles, because that's where digestion occurs. Again, we have the nucleus, the brain of the cell, um, the anal pores where they release waste, and this um, right here and right here. Um, it is on your thing. You need to label that. It, that's the contractile vacuole. That's a C. Sorry, V-A-C-U-O-L-E. Okay. All right, and this is a euglena. Um, our euglenas have something special called a pellicle. Um, so all of our cells have a cell membrane, um, which goes around. And then your euglena has something special. It's a second layer, and that is the pellicle. Okay, so it's kind of like a plant cell that has, a, you know, your cell membrane and a cell wall. Um, but your glena has a pellicle and it helps it to keep its shape. And then these green things in here, because it's plant-like and animal-like, are chloroplasts, so it can make its own food. Here's your contractile vacuole to get rid of extra water. Have a red eye spot there. And of course, you have a nucleus, the brain of the cell. And then all this green stuff in here is cytoplasm. And when I was talking to you guys about the um, amoeba earlier, and I was talking about cytoplasmic streaming. That is, um, it's how the cytoplasm moves in order to help the, um, the protist move. Okay, so I'm going to get out of drawing mode and clear that out for you. Um, so my stuff, my writing is not all over that, and you can see um, the things that you need to label. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is a volvox. Okay, remember this is a special type of protist too because they are individual um, green algae cells that live together in a colony. Um, so this is your hollow ball, your hollow sphere, and inside we have the daughter colony. Um, this is an individual algae cell. I need to label that. And then each algae cell has two flagella. Remember I told you that they will look like that. Okay, and they form a sphere. Okay, and that is it for protists. If you have any questions, please bring them into class. Oh, wait, I lied. Um, the, this is the whole second part. I went over all of this already. You just need to fill in um, all your vocab. So cytoplasm, um, the gel-like substance that fills the inside of the cell. Your cytoplasmic streaming is the movement of the cytoplasm inside the cell, which aids in movement. Your contractile vacuole, I talked to you about that one, it removes excess water. The flagella, long whip-like tail. Pellicle, I told you it was kind of like a cell wall in a plant cell, um, but it's a thin wall that supports the cell membrane. Cilia, short hairs that move in rhythm and are used from locomotion. Those are the short hairs. Flagella are the long ones. Pseudopods, that's the false feet. That's how an amoeba moves. The nucleus is your brain in the cell. Chloroplasts are those green things um, where photosynthesis occurs in plant-like protists um, and also in your euglena, your special protist. The oral groove, um, I told you we weren't going to call it the, um, the gullet or something, what it was labeled on the other thing. We're going to call it the oral groove. 
and that's where um, food is swept into. Your food vacuole is where digestion occurs, and then your red eye spot on your euglena helps it to detect light. And that is it for um, this week. All right, please bring questions into class if you have them.